What's going on folks, it's Mike here and we're going to continue our C++ series talking about arrays and pointer arithmetic and just the truth behind arrays and why the brackets actually mean dereferencing an array. So with that said, let's go ahead and look at some code and review arrays just a little bit. Okay, so the idea here is if you remember if we have some array here, such as an array of integers, and let's just for now just statically allocate that is have a fixed size array here of five elements. That's one, two, three, four, five. And the indexes and whatever the values happen to be in the arrays as follows. So it's important to remember that an array is a contiguous block of memory. That is, there's no gap in between these elements. These elements are tightly packed together. And if I specify that this is an int array, then, well, each of these boxes represents however big an integer is. That's usually four bytes on most systems, but as we've learned, you can use the size of operator to know for sure. So what does this have to do with what we're learning about today when we're going to talk a little bit about pointer arithmetic and sort of array offsets? So if each of these boxes are four bytes, well, what does that mean if we have a pointer and we can increment a pointer? Because, well, we haven't actually talked about it, but you probably didn't know you can actually increment a pointer. So let's just go ahead and look at what this is and sort of set up this example. So what I'm going to do on the left hand side of the screen is I'm going to go ahead and create this array like we have the visualization here. And I'm just going to uh, either you can specify that there are five elements or if we know what we want those values to be, I can simply just leave the brackets empty and between the curly brace, do one, three, five, seven, and nine. Just something a little bit more irregular so that we can work with some data here in our array. Now I'm gonna go ahead and now print out one of the elements of our array just to verify that the zeroth element is, well, whatever the value is that we specified here, which is one here. Again, arrays are uh, zero index based. So let's go ahead and just compile this program. I'll use C++17, nothing specific, uh, no specific features used here, and we get our value here. Okay, so what exactly does this mean? Because we've been learning about memory in a few of the previous lessons, if you've been following along, or if you're just hopping in, again, we're looking at each of these boxes here as a box of memory here, just one individual integer. Uh, that's four bytes large. So if I have some pointer here and it points to integers, so I'll declare it as such here, what happens if I just point it to the array here? What happens if I try to print it out? Well, let's go ahead and see what the result is. And to do this, I'm going to just go ahead and uh, give us a little bit of output here. And let's just say p of x is, and we'll just print out p of x. And if I recompile this and rerun it, well, we get a memory address. So p of x that we have created here, int star p of x equal to array, is actually pointing to the first address of wherever this box of memory is. And if we dereference it, well, let's actually see what happens here. I'll recompile because I've made some changes here, rerun, and well, we get the first element. And that's kind of interesting. So we can now point to boxes of memory just like we previously could using our pointers. So what happens if I try to increment p of x? Because we're pointing to this uh, first address here, this first array. So let's go ahead and try to increment our pointer and see what happens. And let's go ahead and give ourselves a little uh, printout here. And there's different ways that we can do this. I'm just going to do ex plus plus. And let's go ahead and just try printing out ex at this point here. Well, it still compiles and runs. And well, we get a memory address again here. OK. So let's go ahead and give ourselves just a little bit more information here. And let's go ahead and print off what the address is at each of these steps here. And since a pointer stores an address, we're just printing off p of x here. So let me go ahead and uh, just fix up this code here so that we can see everything lined up. And let's go ahead and recompile and rerun. And 
this is kind of interesting now because now we see that, well, P of X initially was at this address. We incremented it and then we moved up four bytes on the address or four on the hexadecimal address. Why four? Well, that's because our arrays, each of these boxes are four bytes here. So that's what we're doing, even though we only incremented the pointer by one. And that's a really important fact to know that every time we increment a pointer, we're moving it the size of the data type, which is however big the size an integer is, usually again, four bytes on most machines. And then when we dereference that address, since we've moved over one element here, so we've moved from this address over to the next box, well, that's why we are getting the value three printed out uh, below here, because we've effectively moved in our array here by pointing to the next element four bytes over in this contiguous chunk of memory. So what happens if I just take a little step back here and I actually just, uh, instead of incrementing P of X every time, or actually it's worth doing one more time just so that we can see we're moving through the array. So if I uh, rerun this again, you can see that we are indeed incrementing every time. But since I know I'm modifying P of X, the address by four bytes, let's just go ahead and um, simplify this a little bit. And instead, what I want to do is just show the array offset or the values every time I offset the array or the pointer to the array. And there's going to be a few different ways that I can do this. So first, let me do it using the pointer that I just showed you here. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to take whatever our pointer was, P of X, add, say, zero to it so that we get our first element. That's what we're pointing to here and dereference it. And that should give us the value of one here. And I'll go ahead and repeat that for each of our elements here, each time offsetting by a larger number here. OK, so let me go ahead and recompile this, rerun it. And voila, you can see that if we're taking our address, adding zero, which again is, well, how much the offset is from our array, or adding one, which is an offset of one integer, so four bytes, or two, which is two integers, eight bytes, three, which is three integers, 12 bytes, et cetera, et cetera, we get the full array printed out that we have stored here. So that's pretty cool. So I actually don't need a pointer at all for this. And I can just go ahead and show you that if I replace these, uh, and actually let me just do the quick uh, replacement here. Then we'll go ahead and see that this should print out the exact same thing because our just the variable array by default points to the start of our array and we are offsetting it by either zero, which is the first element since we're a zero index base. That's again this uh, first item uh, off by another four bytes, eight bytes, 12 bytes, 16 bytes, etc. So what this shows us is that when we've been doing these offsets, we're actually uh, an array again is just a block of memory. So we're thinking about addresses, how much we want to offset an address by and then dereferencing. So we actually have another shorthand syntax for this that we've been using all along for our arrays. And I'll just go ahead and um, write it in the way that we've been doing things previously. And let me just go ahead and do array offset by zero. And let's go ahead and do the rest of these. So by one, two, three, four, I'll recompile, rerun. And just like that, you see that we have the actual same results here. So when we're using brackets here, we're actually dereferencing some memory address that's an offset from our array. Now, are arrays and pointers the same thing? No, not necessarily, right? A pointer just stores one address, while an array actually has some information potentially stored with it, especially if we're using a standard array, which is another data type. So they are different concepts of a contiguous block of memory that's been allocated versus storing an address, but we can move through an array by just using pointer arithmetic, which again is moving us by some integer value.
And the other thing to be aware of is when you're using the brackets, you are dereferencing that array or that address already. All right, folks, so I hope that was an interesting lesson on to what's going on in arrays. You learned a little bit about how pointer arithmetic did, how we're doing uh, incrementing. You could also subtract as well, but I only showed uh, addition in that particular example so that at least you can get a feel for pointer arithmetic. And then finally, we saw how arrays were sort of dereferencing things. Now, it's important to just understand the differences or how we can move through arrays by just sort of incrementing and using pointer arithmetic because I think that builds up your mental model of just what's going on in memory. And again, we'll hopefully solidify this idea that arrays are just contiguous chunks of memory. And in a way, this proves that they are as we're able to iterate through each item. Now, we do have to be careful with the raw arrays that we used in this video because we can go out of bounds very easy versus the standard array where you have member functions like dot at, which are a little bit safer to use. So with that said, I hope this was an interesting insight into pointer arithmetic, what's going on with arrays, and this little hidden secret that the brackets are a shorthand for us programmers to easily dereference and offset into array at the right location. So I hope you found that interesting and we'll see you in the next lesson. Hopefully you'll like and subscribe or at least consider it in the next videos. Take care folks.